This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Those in person, amen. God bless you. Those online, we praise God for you. Amen, amen. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are his people of his pastor and his sheep of his hand. Let us come as we prepare. Let us come to worship him. Now we have a ministry of music by the St. Peter's AME Trio.
Good morning. Individually, we all have to say that we love the Lord, that he heard our cry. So whether you're going back for years and years and years when it was an old-fashioned hymn, or whether it became that popular pop song, we love the Lord, he heard our cries. Good morning, St. Peter's. Uh, if you do not have, and I hope you did pick up uh, the order of worship this morning because it is different than what we are accustomed to. So please rise for the call to worship. And read along with me, please. God has called us from various places and positions. From east and west, north and south, the people of God are gathered in person and online. God has called us from our diversities and peculiar tra tra uh, traditions. Those who are in need shall find help and consolation. We hear God's call as we come to serve. May God use us to truly be good missionaries as we worship with you today. Okay, now.
Hallelujah. This is Missionary Sunday, so you see the missionaries out here this morning. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to have our prayer of invitation. We all bow our heads in prayer. Father God, it's me again, Lord, and I just thank you for waking us up this morning. I thank you for our activities of our limbs and our sound minds, and that we were able to get here to St. Peter's, and you protected us from hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen. Lord God, I thank you for each and every breath that you've allowed us to take. I come before you, Lord, now asking for prayer for those who are in need. I'm asking for prayer for those victims who are with the stabbing in St. Croix. Father God, I ask blessings and protection and help for those who were devastated by the catastrophe of the floods this week, Lord God. Those who are under the stress of the fires, God. I just ask that you protect them, Lord, and keep them safe. Help us to be able to do what we can do to help them through their times of trials and tribulations. Father God, I just ask that you touch the city of Minnesota, Lord God, as we went through many catastrophes this week. We've had shootings this week and young people hurt. Father God, we're just asking that you enter in. We know it's your will, but God, help us to be able to do what we may be able to do to help change this world. One person can make a big difference, God. And if it's in me, let it be me, Lord God. Lord, I ask for blessings right now for those that are sick and shut in. Touch right now Sister Denise Mack's son who had an accident and broke his arm. Touch Sister Irma who had a fall this week, Lord God. Touch her and help her. Father, I just ask blessings right now for St. Peter's Church, Lord God. Let your grace and mercy fall upon us, Lord Jesus. Help us to be able to get our spirits in line with you, Lord God, and be able to do your will, whatever you say. Not what we say, but whatever you say, God. Lord, I come before you asking for forgiveness for any sin that I have done or any of us have done that was not like you. Lord, put your spirit in us, your Holy Spirit in us, and help us to every day fight those temptations that come toward us, Lord God. We just praise you, we love you, we honor you, Lord God, and I thank you. I thank you, and I thank you. I can't thank you enough. If I had 10,000 tongues, I can't thank you enough. Lord God, these things are asked in your son Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Good morning again, St. Peter's. I bring you today's scripture. They are the Old Testament, Psalms 107, verses one through six. Thanksgiving for the deliverance of many troubles. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble, and gather from lands from east and from the west and from the north and the south. Some wandered in the desert ways, finding no way to inhibited towns. Hungry and thirsty, their souls fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. Amen. The New Testament reading is from Luke chapter 12, verse 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to them, friend, who set me to be a judge or an arbitrator over you? And then he said to them, take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable, the land of a rich man produces abundantly. 
And then he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. And then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And then I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, so you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you and the things you prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves but are not rich toward God. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his most holy word. Be blessed today, St. Peter's. Amen. From all that dwells below the skies, let the Creator's praise arise. Let the Redeemer's name be sung through every land by every tongue. what Christ our Savior saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. Good morning again. Some announcements for our church and visiting family. Again, we want to announce that Bethesda Women's Ministry Annual Retreat will be September 16th through the 18th. There is information from Park Nicollet Methodist Hospital about hospice if you're interested. Um, all of those announcements are on our website. As you notice, uh, the missionaries are doing this service because this fifth Sunday is Missionary Sunday. Um, we have some upcoming events. Um, as we know, the summer is fading from us and it's almost time to go back to school. So the missionaries will be doing a back to school event where we will be giving away backpacks. We would like those of you to come and help, who are interested to come and help us pack backpacks on the 27th of August in um, the afternoon. Look for the time, I believe we said it was from one to three. So please, if you're willing to come out, that event will be here. Um, we, oh, excuse me, the backpack giveaway will be on the 27th of August. The packing the backpacks will be on August 20th. So we are getting ready uh, to send our kids back to school with the necessary supplies needed. Um, we also have a future upcoming Missionary Sunday, which is in uh, October. 
And we would like just to invite anybody who is interested in being a missionary. And if you participated in the Missionary Society and the Grant Missionary Society in the past, we would invite you to come back. We are busy, we are working, we are on the battlefield for the Lord. Please join us in our mission work at St. Peter's. God bless you. Sister Lynette is coming with a very upcoming announcement. Please listen. Good morning, church. I hope everybody is doing well this morning. I am coming to you on behalf of the Hot Dogs on the Parking Lot crew. I feel like that's just about everybody in here. First of all, thank you so much to everybody who has contributed or donated, um, volunteered. It feels like almost everybody in the church has participated in this. Um, so it's going to be a great event. It is Tuesday night. 6.30 to 8 on the parking lot. What we need from you now is for you to show up. So a group of us walked the neighborhood yesterday and we took flyers so we know people know. So it would be kind of a bad thing if we had people from the neighborhood and nobody from the church. So we're encouraging and inviting everybody to join us this Tuesday night. We're gonna have food and music and games and prizes for the kids. It's gonna be a great time. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody Please come out. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. On, on, on yesterday, Saturday, the official board met to consider information for the next, fisc, next budget year. They reviewed the fiscal condition of the church, and it was agreed that the pastor would reconstitute the Commission on Stewardship and Finance with the appointment of five to nine members. The immediate task of the Commission will be to prepare a fiscally responsible and prudent budget that supports the church's priority mission of encouraging non-believers to accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior and to support the spiritual needs of the congregation and serve the community. The Commission will be tasked with developing a plan to bring our outstanding general conference obligations current. If you would like to be considered for appointment or if you would like to encourage someone to become a part of this very important commission, please submit your name to the pastor not later than August 2nd. If you would like more information about the expectations or requirements of the commission, you may contact Pastor Flint, Sister Lynette Fraction, Sister Gloria Jeff, or myself. We thank you. Thank you for those, those announcements. As we pray off our giving, and it's a worship and giving. And I mean, how many of us think of as we give that we are giving out of worship? We're thanking God for what he has done and what he's doing in our lives. And we give out of gratitude. I want to thank St. Peter's family for your gifts, those online, for your gifts and also encourage you to to use your times and your talent to enhance the growth of God to enhance the spreading of the gospel to enhance the spirit the love of Christ if you're giving by mail you can mail your offering in or you can Go online, or those who are here may drop it at the, um, as you leave, you may drop it in a box as a made available. So I just want to thank you at this time. Let us pray. Father, we come to say thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give. We thank you, Lord, for the gift and for the giver. And we pray that these tithes and these offerings will be used for the building of your kingdom. First, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'd like to welcome all our visitors. If, you have any, if we have any visitors that are here, will you please stand? And those online, we want to thank you for 
tuning in and sharing with us. And we pray that you will be blessed. And we give God the praise and glory for all that he's doing in our lives. Amen. 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 At this time, I'm going to do an altar call. There is so much going on. There is so much going on that I think sometimes we need to pause a moment and reflect back on Christ. I'm going to ask um, the um, missionaries to come and just stand before the altar. And this is not only for missionaries, but if there's anybody who would like to stand and lift your voice up, I can't help but think about a conversation that I had this week with a young man who said, I have no reason to live. I want to kill myself. And I talked with him. I prayed with him. We talked. My brothers and sisters, this is real. And prayer will see us through. We got to let go of self and allow God to do his will. Idea. 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 Will you come? Stand me. Yeah. Just stand right there. Just stand close with you. Yeah. Family. Now, if there's anything that you specifically want to pray about, pray for. A welcome. To it at this time. It's time for us to stop being ashamed. It's time for us to lift up our voices to the Lord. I don't know no one else that I know will see me through. So Lord God, I come to you today as one of your honor shepherds and I'm praying, interceding on behalf of St. Peter's and those that are online have your way, Lord. And Lord, we have fallen short. We have sinned. But you sent your son, Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary Cross and who rose for our sins. I, I want to thank you, Lord, for cleaning us, for forgiving us, and Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be reconciled back to you. There are many of us among us that are sick. Touch them. We have many in our bulletin. And there are those who are not on our bulletins. We may not know of. Brother Philip, keep him in prayer. Sister Coleman, keep her in prayer. I'm a Coleman. Brother Clayton, keep him in prayer. 
and there are many others that I might not know, but I'm, at, I'm lifting them up. Have your way, Lord, and we invite your Holy Spirit in this place. We invite your Holy Spirit in us. And we lift up our voices to you. Bless and anoint this service. That we may be careful to give you the praise, you the glory. Not only here, not only at this time, but everywhere we go, that we will keep you, keep you in our hearts, and stay focused on you. For it's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. God is good, amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. I pray, Lord, that I may decrease and let, that you may increase and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen, amen. I want to thank the missionaries, amen, uh, for conducting the services. I want to thank each and every one of you. I know the work that missionaries do. I've been, I uh, experienced some missionary work within the Amy Church, and I have also experienced the missionary work with other denominations. And this is a great opportunity to learn from each other, to, to walk together and realize that everybody has the same goal, that is, that is spreading the good news, that is making a difference in somebody else's life. And that's very important for us to understand and very important for us to, to know that it's, it, that's important. That's important. That's very important. I'm going to read the scripture this morning out of Philippians chapter 2, verses uh, 3 to 11. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death of the cross. Before God also had highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that the tongue that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Just use it for a subject uh, this morning. Servanthood. Servanthood. And when you think about servanthood, I think about the attitude of servanthood. Made the New Testament church unique. It is a necessary ingredient for any church and any believer. believer. Attitude. Attitude. Paul used Jesus as the ultimate example of a servant of a servant. After arguing, his, after talking to the audience, and he said, be humble. Live Selflessness. He reminds them that of Christ's incarnation. He left the glories of heaven and the highest of position in heaven, not only his creation, but to take up on the lowest of creation. Jesus stepped through six levels as he moved downward to you and I. This is what he did. First, he gave us divine form. Secondly, he emptied himself of all, of any right, any, anything right, of the rights, of his rights. He became a man, and further, he became a servant. Then he was obedient to the point of death. And then he died a terrible kind of death. We live in an egotistical world, age. That is, what is it in, what's in it for me? We mentally think about and think about what I do, what's in it for me. If there's nothing in it for me, I don't want to do it. If I can't be promoted, I don't want to do it. If I can't get the glory, I don't want to do it. Instead of, instead of asking ourselves, how can I best be used by the Lord in serving the church? We, add, we want to know what's in it for me. But as missionaries, as servants of God, 
We are to serve the church, and we are the church. We are to serve others, our community, our neighbors, our families. We want to be a servant, but yet we don't want to serve. We want people to serve us. But it's like this. We lived to serve others. Christ came here to serve others. Christ came to be an example for us. Looking at the needs of others rather than our own. If we're always looking at our needs and not looking at others, we defeat the purpose of living. Do you know the importance of watching and observing others? Do you know the importance of serving others? I was in a meeting, evangelism workshop, and people was telling me they are giving their testimonies. And this musician, a young man is from Mississippi, he said, you know, my wife and I, we serve the community. We invite people in our home. He said, and we minister to them in our home. And as they go out, we minister to them. He said, and we've had up to five people. He said, but now we only have one. He said, but I, we minister to that one just as hard as we minister to the five. That one is just important is the five. So each person is important. So we must learn to live a life of service, live a life of loving people in spite of. Now, as we look at the book of Acts in chapter 2, verses 44, it says, Now all who bleed were together and all had all things in common. In other words, they were on one accord. They were working together. But it also goes on to say in, in 40, verse 45, and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all. Anyone in need. Paul challenges us with the servant of Christ and Philippians. He challenges us. That's what he wrote. Let us be, let this be in you, which was also in Christ. In other words, we are to become servants to Christ. We are to be thinking of, of Christ, and Christ is the center. Christ is our joy. Christ is our hope. Christ is our all in all. And as we serve, we keep our eyes on Jesus. That Jesus, he humbled himself. And what? What is service? Service is a matter of Humility. Humility is when we take our focus off ourselves and make our end serving the needs of others. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through, though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. True humility is not thinking self less of yourself. Let me repeat that. True humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of your selflessness. And you're thinking. You're thinking different. You're not thinking of yourself, but you're putting yourself being selfless. In other words, it's not about you, but it's about Christ. It's about loving him. It's about showing the world, in spite of what you may see, the hatred, the strife. But let them see the love that God has put in you. What Christian discipleship amounts to is that we become disposed. Now, 
to serve the interests of God and surrender of our own self serving interests. And you know, we're totally surrendered to Christ. Are you totally surrendered? Have you surrendered your life to Christ? Are you obedient? Are you humble? Do you realize that we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before us so that we would walk in them? Do you know that? Do you believe that? We are not saved to merely be freed from sin, guilt and sin, but so that we will serve the Lord and others. It is God's will for us to allow him to serve through us. We are the instruments that God uses. But you must trust and obey. You must believe. And if you believe in Christ, if you believe and trust in him, do you think that he will lead you astray? Do you think he will lead you astray, abandon you? He said, God will never leave us nor forsake us. We must stand on his word. See, we... If you are not serving God in some fashion, you cannot grow spiritually as you should grow. If you are not, if you're not serving God in a way, if you're not serving him, you cannot grow like you should grow. And there may be some wondering, well, I, why am I not growing? Well, what's wrong? Are you serving him? with your whole heart, soul, and mind. Are you humbling yourself to him? Are you allowing him to lead? Are you listening to him? As missionaries, as clergy, as lay leaders, as choir members, and the list can go on and on. But as believers, we have an obligation, we have a responsibility to serve the Lord, to serve him. And as we grow spiritually, then, then we grow in our talents, our skills, our gifts. These all that we've been given, God given us, and we, we serve God, and we give him all that we have. We give him the best. So you cannot allow Christ to live through you without being a servant. So if you truly serve him, if you truly love him, and if you're obedient to his word, his will, people can see him through you. And you want to say, well, you know, there, there may be times you say, well, I, I don't see that. It's not for you to see. It's for others to see. But if you're not truly committed, people will not see it. You will not grow. Why? Because you are not committed to serving him. That means, serving him means reading his word, meditating on his word, trusting in him, allowing him, allowing him, allowing him to close you, you know, serving, serving him is a matter of sacrifice. You know, it's a matter of obedience. All of these take place. You know, we have to be obedient. We have to be sacrificed. So as you give your life to Christ, I'm giving my life to Christ, and I think everything going to be all right. Yes, everything will be all right. But there will still be some trials, some ups, some downs. But you have to trust and obey. Trust and obey. 
as you will trust him and obey, you begin to see, you begin to see the presence. And I know there are some people online, there are some people, some believers here today that have experienced the moving of God in their life. They have experienced healing, they experienced deliverance. And so you know that God is real. No matter what you're going through, if you trust in him, he will see you through. If you trust him, he will see you through. It, it, you know, it, it costs Christ and servitude to the Father. It costs him to redeem, to, to come down, to reach down, to redeem us. But Christ Jesus was willing to pay the price. Obedience to his father. When Jesus spoke to his disciples about serving it at the Last Supper, he didn't try to convince them that it would be an easy road, an easy ride. He got straight to the point to cause, to the cost in serving the kingdom. There is a cost. There's a cost you have to pay. But when you trust him, you will receive the reward. I thank God for his mercy. I thank God for his love. I thank God for all that he's done, he's doing in my life. I thank God. And I'm at the point that now I see that the enemy is trying to block the view. The enemy is trying to stop. Everything you turn around is something. That's not in line with the word. And if we're not careful, we'll get distracted and give up. But I'm here to tell you those on lines, I'm here to tell you those here, don't give up. Stand on the word of God. Don't give up. The harvest is plenty. Don't give up. Don't give up. Just keep living the word. Keep preaching the word. I don't care how young you are. Don't give up. I don't care how mature you may be. Don't give up. You may not be able to run fast as you used to. But the turtle don't run fast but he will get to the destination. We can still get to the destination that God has for us. Run, but run in the name of Jesus. Speak, speak in the name of Jesus. Trust in the name of Jesus. Do not doubt. I don't care what we are faced with. Don't give up. Missionaries, keep working, keep teaching, keep giving, keep making a difference in, in the people's lives, keep trusting. And I said, Lord, see, Jesus was telling his disciples, here, look out, there, there's work to do, men's and, and women's work to do. So he was saying, I, I need persons who, are, who have a deep, who have a king perspective and a deep conviction. So you got to have a conviction. You got to truly believe in Christ Jesus. You got to truly love him. You got to truly be ready to commit your all. Teach us, good Lord, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not count the cost to fight, and not yield to the wounds, to the toil, and not to seek for rest, but to labor and not to ask for any reward, and just save that knowing that there is a reward, knowing that you have us. In other words, in Romans 1 it says, Paul tells us, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service. Service is a matter 
also of commitment. Are you committed? Christ was committed to do the will of God. He was committed to the point of death, even to the cross. Jesus was committed to call the call of committed to the call of God to his Father in his life. Whatever God his Father said, he committed to pleasing his Father. Are you ready? Are you prepared to please the Lord? Are you willing to be committed to serving the Lord? Not man. That means everything won't go your way. But you will be committed to serving him. And then keep the right attitude so that you can stay in the presence of God. So you can hear him. Trust him. And do not doubt. Jesus was totally committed to his father and us. How committed are you in service to him? Are you committed? Are we committed? This is what, as a body of Christ, we must be committed. Do we trust him? Do we really believe that he? We talk about, we say things about our about the generations and look things are lost things are going look what's happening in the world everything is is being destroyed do you have faith in God are you have more faith in the enemy Christ died for you and I Do you believe he'll answer your prayer? So when you're walking every day, you pray. Don't stop. Do you think he'll hear your prayer when, you, when you're praying for your children, your grandchildren, your friends, your neighbor? He will hear your prayer. And he will answer your prayer according to his time. But you got to believe. As missionaries, keep walking, keep trusting. As believers, let's keep walking. Let's keep trusting. Let's keep believing. And knowing that service is a matter of privilege. It's just an honor. It's a blessing. To serve in a local church. It's a blessing. See, we had the first time said, God don't need us. We need him. But yet he will use us if we humble ourselves. So, my brothers and my sisters, those here, those online, I'm saying, will you give yourself to the Lord? We have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to serve in the church, to serve in our local churches, but also to serve in the community. And you don't just serve on, on, on Sunday, but you serve every day. You're a witness every day. And keep your ears open. Keep your eyes open. Because you never know when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. You never know when he's speaking to you to make a difference in somebody's life. A smile. You never know. Today, we need to rethink about our relationship with the Lord. As a missionary, is your relationship with the Lord 
Are you in good standing? Are you following? As believers, are we following Christ Jesus? If someone would trail you down the highway, and as you get out your car, your vehicle goes somewhere, could they see Christ in you? Let us be servants. Let us serve with our heart, soul, and mind. Let us be unselfish. Let us be obedient. And knowing that it's a privilege, it's a blessing, it's an honor to serve God. It's you. As we stand for the invitation. Is there one? I, I would just like my wife to sing a verse of blessed assurance. Just think about it. Is there one? Come on, come on. You come on. You come on. You can come on. Blessed assurance. Jesus. Jesus is can't make it without Jesus. Here's that oh, one. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. Here's that one. Online, is there one? I've been born in his spirit. Thank you, Lord. Is that one? I've been washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. I've been praying. Here's that one. This is my song. Raising my say. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, the day long. This, this, this is my story. I asked for them to come up because I felt you may be seated. I feel in my spirit just to pray for them. And when I see young people and children, 
That's to my heart. To my heart. Because there's so much going on, and I just want to pray protection over you. Because we can't make it without the Lord. This is our now generation and the future. Right here. You. Our future. Right here. And just before I pray, is there anything that you want in particular to pray? Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this couple, these children. And Lord, I pray that you will bless them in a special way. And then, Lord, we ask that you would touch them as they get their education. Bless them with a sound mind. And keep them from hurt, harm, and danger. Protect them from the wiles of the enemy. And help them to know that you know, that you know, Lord, that they know that there is a God. Because I know children may not respond like adults, but Lord, you have a way of speaking to our children. You have a way of touching our children. So I pray that you would touch them in the name of Jesus. Touch them. Heal them. Protect them. And strengthen them. The parents. Lord, we love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We magnify your name. Touch and heal. Touch and strengthen. And whatever we can do, Lord, as a church, as a church body. Help us to be willing, willing and committed to make a difference. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We magnify your name. Vince, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Let the church say amen and amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now you could be a future doctor, lawyer, preacher, teacher, missionary. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Amen, amen. Let us stand for the benediction. Missionary benediction, you all. Praise the Lord. In the name of the triune God, may the spirit.